Well, I am really liking this device. It allows me to do this quickly without much effort, the way I am dressed right now. It's a huge benefit. Of course, if this were work and stones and other stuff in an unknown terrain, okay, that would be a different thing. But in my case, this is just the way to go. And look at how this looks like at the moment. So first, the part further ahead. So you see, it is empty now, but we are expecting rain. The sky is cloudy. It will not rain today, but over the next few days, there will be more and more rain. And this will then fill up. But then the pump is also not working because of the lack of sunshine. So this falls dry, but you can see the effect. And here, the vetiver that I just cut with this lovely device is now like this. And I also cut a little bit around. So it's basically mulch in situ. And you can see the result. And I don't mind that this trench fills in a little bit. It's biomass, it will decompose and it will provide nutrition and moisture to the trees. And uh, as you can see, they have started to make leaves and flowers. Those are the peach trees. And all this should certainly benefit this area, but then more trees are needed and they will come. But that's the thing for the upcoming autumn. So you can earmark basically two events. One is to make this a food forest instead of a wannabe food forest. And then the other event also for autumn is where we duck this new pond. So not this one, this is our grey water pond, but the other one. So there's plenty of things that we can do together. You see, I'm not talking about together, together, and volunteers and community and all that, because that's the new way. <laughs> it seems to work much better, I believe. And here you have Mr. Cat. He is also around. He turned out to be loyal, <laughs> which is good. Of course, the food makes him loyal. So things are going in the right direction and I'm very happy. I should probably also do a quick pass here, just so that this can also grow much nicer. So let me do it quickly. So this certainly is a bit nicer now. That should allow the vetiver to grow as soon as there's more light and more sunshine. So here it is, BCS two wheel tractor. That should help us to prepare the site for the Miyawaki forest.
This is our area A7, where Life Terra will help us to plant 28,000 saplings. And if you are interested in lending us a hand, then you are invited as a volunteer. We will provide transportation from airport or train station and provide you the food, a room to sleep, either in a hotel if you choose this, or in our cortijo, or you can pitch a tent and get all the services that you need for that. We will have a shower available and of course a toilet. And while we are planting, there will be catered lunch. And later we can go and visit a bar if you still have energy left that you would like to spend. So you are invited to help us probably for a week or two or maybe three to get these 28,000 saplings into the ground. The event will start on April 9th. You can arrive on the Sunday before, it will be April 8th. And you can stay for as long as you like. And we definitely do appreciate your help. And we will answer in kind by feeding you well and uh, hopefully making you happy. So mark the date and send an email to the address shown here. And then we will coordinate this. So all the Palovnia trees are sprouting. So we definitely missed the opportunity for a technical cut. But I also think it's not really needed because they have grown well. And the technical cut, I had my doubts about this, is said to be necessary when you are in a climate where they grow a lot slower. And that might not be the case here. So you can see that there are leaves all over these trees and uh, I will try to get you a close-up. So here we have a case I can show you that from much closer. You can see that this definitely is a sprouting tree. And all over the trunk it looks like that. And it is from those trees that were planted last year. So by May or so, they will be one year old. And I don't think that the technical cut would have helped. So I guess in our case, it's not really needed. Which for the commercial planting of this is an important data point because it means that we save on labor. So that's a good thing. Let's go for a little walk. I think maybe today there is an opportunity to show you the big swale that we have in our zone C. We'll see what we can find. This over there is what used to be CT1, our temporary paddock, where for a long time nobody has been grazing uh, on the other side of the animal path. This here is our neighbor, the new tenant. This is not the big piece, this is uh, the place of the older couple. And as you can see, he has been pruning the oak trees He's doing everything like the book says, the book about the Hesa management and aprovechamiento, which means how to take advantage of the natural resources. He is trying to optimize things for an economic positive outcome. 
there is no idea to fix things or improve. It's all about optimizing what can be taken away and exchanged for money. Of course, people said that this is important, but then this won't fix the hole in the tree and will not prevent the tree from dying, in my humble opinion. And as you can see, they have been doing this all over the place by running the chainsaw. But most of that is going to waste or will be burned because that's also part of the tradition. It is thought to produce acorn, pro uh, to increase acorn production. And we should probably do something similar, but I'm of the opinion that while our trees here on that side are suffering, I rather let them grow and uh, recover than to be cutting all the time. And it might be difficult to see here on this very wide angle lens, but I think they are looking better than they used to, because we are not doing this. But like I said, I'm talking about those in the distance and on this camera, it is a little bit hard to see. So now I am walking along the fence line of CT1, this uh, enclosed paddock where we had pigs and cows. And I want to see how these how the swale there looks like. And as I walk here, I am passing also some fallen oak trees. Uh, we do have a few, which is why we also bought a chainsaw, so that we can do something with that to clean it up a little bit. As time permits, we'll see. But in general, the idea is not to do anything here until we really know what we want to do and likely that is to take a sector a strip and then plant sun hemp and friends and also some palovnia trees together with irrigation so that we can manage this alive and make it alive um over summer and that is now the plan the area here has recovered quite well with all the rain, so there was no seeding here. This is all natural as it emerged. So that's pretty nice. Now let's go over here. And you see the first part of that swale, there is some water in it. We have another tree limp that came off and you can see they are all hollow on the inside and that is the problem. It's a combination of a bacteria and the trout. So they are basically dying and all this cutting is not really fixing this illness. The tree is sick and the same way as people in the past believed that by taking out blood from a human, that that will then cure the human. <laughs> I don't believe that this is true for trees neither. So this is not the way, I think. But what I can show you is here in that swale, so there is grass growing, which is positive. So people said, do something to add biomass and nature heard that call. So nature is doing it, which is very good. And I will take you there, but I can tell you from the distance already that the Palovnia trees there are a little bit further ahead than the others because they have already made leaves. You will not be able to see this here from the distance. But then when I loop around, I will be able to show you that. So let's continue to explore this. So here is another lower lying area of that swale. 
and as you can see there is some standing water we are awaiting more rain so the forecast talks about rain we will see how much that's going to be but for the moment it is cloudy in the 20 centigrade area above 20 yeah, you can see that I had to take this off and it's t-shirt weather right now and when the rain comes the temperatures will drop forecast talks about single digit we will see how that goes but then of course the rain comes from where it's cold the grass grows there on the berm is also impressive now I wish I had brought the other cameras uh, to zoom in this will have to do for now and those of you who will be here shortly the 9th of April is not that far away you will be able to see this with your own eyes so come on down if you have not yet answered the call 8 beds will arrive tomorrow some Monday and then we can sleep eight people there in the cotejo, but we can make room for more. Just need to buy another bed. So there is space for more people. So here is the integrated pond, and you see this looks pretty perfect. And I'm very happy with the berm. And no, this is not because we don't have any cattle anymore. So this is new. This wasn't there before. And the cattle probably contributed to this, what you see. So one word about the cattle and having or not having it. So as you might know, we did some form of adaptive managed holistic grazing, however you want to call that. And that meant um, we did control the time the cattle is at any given place. So this growth that uh, we can see here would have emerged in any case because we would not have let them in for the time required. So this is not the effect of not having cattle. With cattle it's the management that makes the difference. So if you do set stocking 100 cows on 100 hectare then of course you will not get this because they will roam the whole place and eat everywhere and we never did that so we always controlled and when we decided it's enough then we fed them straw and uh, alfalfa pellets and stuff like that so they would not have overgrazed in any place but then the place was in a bad shape to begin with and therefore things were the way they are and we got rid of the cattle not because of any overgrazing issue but because of the losses the financial losses because the market is is basically not working so when you raise a bull and keep that animal for four years grass fed and then you get a meager 1000 euro for this huge animal that makes no sense alone the labor cost is more plus the additional summer feed so that is the reason why we got rid of them and of course there were restrictions because they um, caused that people were occupying themselves with the cattle instead of working on the other things this did not work out because of the mentality and prior knowledge and the way of thinking and uh, the idea that you manage the cattle by assigning them an area and then leave them alone this is not coming here so it's either be with them and do only that or do something else that you can do both that was a new thing so let's go up to the other swale and have another look there so i already see a palovnia tree with leaves and the smaller ones that got destroyed by the cattle browsing they should re-sprout in that particular case i don't see it might take a moment 
but this one here clearly does. You can see how it is emerging down there. And the other one here clearly already has made actual leaves. So there is no doubt. So, and here in that swale, there is also some standing water. But you can see how the soil looks like. So this soil will not hold water. And therefore, there is no point in observing that swale, how much water it has and so on. So basically it is full a few hours after the rain and then maybe for three days. And then the water will be gone as long as this is so sandy and stony. But then with more plants, this will then change. So that swale is basically an investment into the future. And a glimpse of the future you can see because it gets populated there at the bottom by some grasses that take advantage of the moisture that is there for longer. So that is a slow job, but a job that is ongoing. So here is another case of a more or less destroyed Palovnia tree that is coming back. So the cows that were here scratching, they did the technical cut, which is totally normal. So if you have a pasture, a wood pasture, you will have always animals doing that. And apparently that is very healthy for the trees, up to a certain extent, obviously. This is even nicer because it has multiple trunks and there's no intention to change this. This should grow as it wants to and can because it is here for biomass and shade. This is not a wood production tree. Also, it's the same species. And inside of this whale, you see that it's already breaking up because it falling, it is falling dry. But then soon we will get some rain. And over here, there are some taller grasses in that swale. And that should be the Sudan grass that is coming back. So we do have Sudan grass. Those are the survivors that self-seeded. And here I am standing in front of a big Polovnia tree. This is the tallest one. So we can go up and have a closer look. So this one is now basically as high, uh, almost as high as the oak tree next to it. And you can see that definitely has made leaves. So on our way around there. No? There you can see it. So that's very positive. And its sibling here on the other side is doing the very same thing. As they all are. So there, further ahead to the right, there is another one that is also in the same stage. So this system here continues to work. Also the berm is still sand and stone and there is the occasional plant, so to say. But this will be let be and it should develop as it wants to until our planting efforts have reached that point. So I said this several videos ago, last time I was here. The idea is we now focus on small areas, do them, fence them off, and step by step, without a lot of animals, we will then work our way up and we also build more ponds in the process of doing that. And maybe some other structures to retain water and eventually we come to this area here and then we'll see how it will be at that point in time. And who knows what we are going to do on this berm when the time comes. The idea is to have these trees here for biomass and shade and let's say we want 
to plant some veggies here. Maybe by then we have the soil for veggies and also the shade and then we can do this here. Or we will then focus on creating that soil. So we will see. This is not known how this is going to be. And it also doesn't matter at the moment. I just mentioned this so that you guys have an idea and also know that there is some sort of a plan. So this is not completely random. I do have an idea what to do with these 45 hectares, but then I have to make decisions as I see things develop. So I cannot draw a master plan knowing nothing at the very beginning and then hope that in 10 years all this will still be true. This is not how things go. I have to understand that this is a complex system and right now I know very little and in 10 years I know a lot more. And until then I have to be patient and just uh, yeah, basically check at every step what it means and what can be done and of course also the issue with the resources available. It's a journey. So it's not that we make a master plan for a hectare and then build something there. This is not how it works. And I also think the larger the structures are or the larger the, the space is, um, the less these plant approaches. I'm thinking about a permaculture design, as good as it is, um, has less and less use for that. So it works in smaller pieces. And sure, why not? So you can split the 45 hectares in 45 pieces and then do a permaculture design, a drawing and all these things that they are involved for this one hectare piece and then install something there and then move on to the next. I'm sure that works. Unfortunately, I'm not that kind of person. And even if I develop software, I don't take this big upfront design approach. It's actually the opposite. So I rather build something that's working and then I build the next tiny thing that's working and so on. And that's basically the same. And here we are definitely talking about a complex system, while in software it is more complicated than complex, but the humans involved, <laughs> those people that will then use the software, they make it complex. And also if it's a business stuff, um, business is complex. You don't know what happens in the market, what the competitors are doing and so on. So complexity should not be underestimated. And every time you do something with complexity, then you seek an adaptive approach. So you do something and validate and verify, plan, and then you do it again. Plan, do, check, act, said someone a long time ago. You can look up his name, Deming. He was an American statistician, so a math person, in Japan, and he helped Toyota back then. It's a very long time ago. But Deming is the name, and this PDCA cycle is basically the beginning of uh, or one of the earlier things in this line of thinking. There is more about this, but let's uh, stick to a different topic. So there you can see um, why I'm doing the things the way I do them. And I think that's better, and it also helps to manage the resources, which are always limited. So you also have to adapt to this factor. Nadu? little detail that I can show you. You see this light colored stuff? That is what the excavator took out from deep down below. 
So this is pure minerals, as you can see. So that is what uh, we have between the granite rock and then there is water on top of that and then we have this material. And then later we have the organic material, our soil. So this is what he dug out from around 3-4 meters of depth.